Hey, what's up everybody? Today I wanted to compare two very different laptops, the Apple MacBook Pro 14 and the Asus Zephyrus G14. On one hand, we have the top of the line Apple MacBook, which is the M4 Max. I got 128 gigs of RAM, but it's thin, it's light, it's portable. And on the other, we have the Asus Zephyrus G14, which is affordable, also portable at 14 inches, and it has an NVIDIA GPU. Ultimately, I'm making this video to help decide, can I reasonably switch from a Mac to a PC? What's the hardware trade-offs we're making? What are the equivalent software packages? And how is it like in day-to-day -day use? Also, if you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button. That really helps the channel out and helps me make more videos. In terms of specs, at first glance, they're both closer than you might think. They're both roughly three and a half pounds and made of premium aluminum. I spec the MacBook out with the M4 Max processor, which has 40 GPU cores, 16 CPU cores, four terabytes of storage and 128 gigabytes of RAM, along with the liquid retina display, which has the ProMotion support. In terms of pricing, the MacBook I have costs a little under $6,000 US. On the other hand, we have the Asus Zephyrus G14 with an AMD 8945HS processor, which has eight cores, and 32 gigs of RAM, and has a GeForce 4070 card, which also has eight gigs of dedicated video memory. The Asus also comes with a high-end OLED display, which is 2880 by 1800 and 120 hertz refresh rate, which is very close to ProMotion, although the Apple display is a mini LED, which is different than OLED, and some people prefer that, especially when you're doing programming or media creation. In terms of battery size, both come with a roughly 73 watt hour battery, and they both have 1080p webcams. However, despite having similar specifications in some areas, they couldn't be more different in many ways. The MacBook comes with OS X installed, which is favored by both creators and programmers because it's based on Unix, but the style is really on point, it's easy to use, and it has a very unified UI approach. On the other hand, the ZenBook ships with Windows 11, and one of its primary strengths is the amount of games available, and the other is that you could choose any PC. You don't have to just buy from Asus, there's Dell, and there's HP, and there's Lenovo, and a slew of vendors, and so you can swap between hardware and decouple the hardware from the software. Apple is known for its deep and seamless integration, and that starts with iCloud. So you're gonna be able to have the MacBook and use iMessage to get all your text messages and everything and make FaceTime calls just like you would in your phone and transfer them between them. And it also will have things like your iPhoto library. So if I take a picture on my phone, I can just have it show up on my computer and it's a very seamless and easy to use experience that just sort of happens in the background for you. There are also other features, like if you have an iPad, you can just set it next to your laptop and use it as a secondary display, and it all just magically works. With Windows, on the other hand, you're gonna have to sign up for a service like OneDrive or Google Photos, and not everything is compatible in the same way. So there are ways to get text messages, and you can also use things like WhatsApp, but there's really no equivalent for things like FaceTime that work on your phone and on the computer as seamlessly as the Apple ecosystem does. If you have a family, one of the big features you might miss out on in Windows is the location tracking also. So as any Apple user knows, if you have an Apple family, you can have everybody's location there and you can also have their device locations. So if somebody loses a phone or a set of AirPods, et cetera, well, you can track them down using the app and you can put an air tag in your luggage. And so all of that goes into one app and it can run on your computer or on your phone or whatever. And it makes managing family a lot easier. On Windows, you won't find that. You'll have to tie together multiple services and sometimes use like off-brand different trackers and stuff. And it's just not as good of experience. I also released a video this past week, which was about WSL2 on Windows, which lets you do a lot of that Unix-like development on Windows using Linux. Microsoft did a great job of creating a virtual machine that runs Linux and integrates with things like VS Code. So the experience is very seamless. And the reason I mention is because I also took the time to edit that video on Windows on the G14 using DaVinci Resolve instead of my normal Final Cut workflow. So if you haven't seen it, go check that video out and see if you can notice any differences or not. Certainly DaVinci is a very capable software package. It runs on both Windows and Mac, so I could use it on either one, but I wanted to see if I could edit a video on the go. And here's where some of the big differences come in. I was trying to edit the video on the go and I had the laptop and it was just sitting on the laptop case. And I think that blocked the fans at the bottom. And so I was editing with Resolve and it started to really slow down, but then it also was like obscenely hot and then the fans started to kick on. And so I moved it off the case and which is put on my lap. And at that point I noticed it was super hot. And so 
it easily gets over 150 degrees Fahrenheit whenever I'm editing videos consistently with or without the vents blocked. And so when I'm editing videos on this, I tend to not use it on my lap and I was using it on a stand and making it stood basically vertically so that I could get as much airflow as possible around the laptop. I have never had that experience with my MacBook. So I have edited videos in Final Cut Pro and took it with me on airplanes and traveling. And it's always very cool. You can almost never hear the fans and I've never really felt too much heat coming out of it. It's very cool to the touch in most scenarios and I haven't had to stand it up or do anything special there. And so I think definitely feeling how hot the ASUS got while doing that made me reconsider traveling with it. And that sort of brings up the next point, which is that with all that heat, uh, when it's that hot and doing video editing, et cetera, the battery goes down faster. In terms of both laptops and battery power, with the MacBook, I don't have to think about it much. I do have the M4 Max model, which means that if I do a big compile job or an FFmpeg transcoding job, it does use the battery pretty quick, but that's like seven hours or something. And so you could certainly stress test it to the max and make it drain a little quicker, or you could just do light uses and make it last a lot longer. However, when I just do like my normal video editing stuff on the Asus, the battery does drain much faster. So if it's idle, and maybe if I'm playing just a YouTube video or something and the brightness is reasonable, the battery seems to last a decent amount, and I'm sure somebody can get seven or eight hours of it just in general usage. However, in practical usage, and especially for media creation, you know, I would be lucky to get an hour and a half out of it. And it's sort of like EVs with range anxiety. So if you've ever seen an electric car that's not like a Tesla long range or something, uh, you always have to worry about like, where's the charging station and do I have enough mileage? And that's what the Asus is like. It's like, yeah, if I floor this and if I do this video edit and if I post this and all that, uh, I'm definitely gonna lose a lot of battery. And that's just something I don't experience with the MacBook. In terms of the easy use, I did have a couple of failed renders with DaVinci, but it also had more options. So in this case, I was editing MKV files with the AV1 codec and Final Cut Pro said, yeah, I'm not even gonna import that. However, with DaVinci Resolve, I was like, sure, I'll import that. And I spent like several hours editing it. And then I went to export and it kept crashing on export. So I then had to retranscode it to something more palatable and then do the edit again. And everything worked fine, but there's certainly rough edges that exist on both platforms. However, DaVinci with its flexibility might come with a few other edge cases that you wanna watch out for. And now we get to the gaming section of the video, which might be one of the most ridiculous comparisons. There is no comparison. The G14 can run games and I don't run games on my MacBook. Now you could get tools like Crossover and the limited subset of games which are released natively for the MacBook, but let's be honest, Windows has all the games, MacBooks have like some games sometimes with caveats. I was able to check out the new Oblivion remaster. It seemed to run good. Uh, you know, obviously with a thin and light laptop like this, I did use the DLSS or the AI scaling features and I ran it lower because that's a high res screen, 2880 by 1800. It's a lot of pixels to push, especially for a 4070. So I scaled that up, uh, it ran decently. It certainly wasn't the best. I, I don't really like gaming on a 14 inch monitor. Uh, I did plug in a 27 inch external monitor and it ran well there. And there's a caveat there where you have to be careful of how you connect the monitor. So if you connect the wrong port in the wrong way, it's not gonna go through the Nvidia card and that will be a problem. And Apple has none of those problems, but it's also not running the game. So you can take it or leave it there. When gaming, the battery's also gonna drain fast. So if you think you're gonna take this thing eight hours of playing games, no, you're not. You're gonna get a couple hours at best and probably less than two hours uh, almost every time. In terms of development, Windows having WSL2 made it super easy. I could pop open VS Code, I could edit Golang programs and Node programs, I can run a Minecraft server, I can do all of that stuff and it sort of just works and it's very seamless and I was really happy with the performance. However, and this is not exactly a fair comparison, but on the $5,000 plus MacBook, it has 128 gigabytes of memory. And what that allows me to do is run local machine learning models and I can sort of run you know, almost any one of them that's available. And so oftentimes what you see is people download these models and they'll be highly uh, quantized. So they will have poor results, but they'll actually fit into memory. And most people have a system that has like 32 gigs of RAM. And so that's why they have to do it. But with 128 gigs of RAM, you have a lot of options. You can run a lot of different models 
and get decent and high quality responses. Now the NVIDIA cards are very good for machine learning if you get the high end ones because their prompt processing time is very fast. And so on the MacBook, the prompt processing time is not very fast and that sort of hampers the RAM, but the fact that you can do it at all on the laptop and you can do it when you're on the go and still not kill your battery entirely is amazing and props to Apple for that. You may be asking yourself, chat GPT is like 20 bucks a month and so is Gemini and uh, Claude and all that, right? Why would you ever do that? Well, one application I have is I get a bunch of mail every day and I have a scanner. And so I scan all of that in. And then what I've done is I've created a small Python program which reaches to my file share and it runs it through a vision model. And it says, hey, name this file for the proper folder and the proper date and tell me if it's important or not. And so it actually goes through all my mail for me once I scan it in and it categorizes it all and keeps it all in a file structure so that if I need to look something up later, I can find it all. And so that saves me a bunch of time. It's a real practical application. And there's lots more sort of like many use cases like that that I could see with local LLMs in the future. So this comparison is also gonna sound almost as ridiculous as the games one, but thermals and fan noise. In my use cases, the MacBook is always nearly silent and pleasant to touch. So if I ran a bunch of compiler benchmarks while doing video exports, et cetera, it's possible I can get it warm, but it's never gonna be as hot as the Asus G14. So disclaimer, I'm not a lab. I don't have a bunch of test results or anything. I do have a thermal thermometer I bought for cooking and I did check Asus G14 with that. So maybe the Mecca could get, could get hotter in some scenario or something, but I haven't seen it. The G14 on the other hand, the fans do spin up quick and they stay on. And you can edit all this through the Armory Crate app, but you're not gonna change the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are, it has a very powerful processor and it has a very powerful GPU and it's on battery. And that means that it's pulling power, that battery pack is slightly heating up. It's got three fans in this model and they're all trying to exhaust that air out between all of these. And so it's gonna get hot and you're gonna hear fan noise. In terms of build quality, nothing beats the MacBook. The MacBook is the highest end laptop you can buy. The aluminum is very durable. I actually have MacBook Airs for my kids and they do not treat their laptops correctly at all. They literally throw them sometimes on wood floors and all sorts of different things, and they still run somehow. And so despite wanting to treat the MacBook very delicately, just based on the price, uh, I'm always you know worried about all sorts of things happening to it. And I have put it in the case and made sure that it's extra safe and there's never anything pushing against it or anything. In practice, they're very durable and it feels great. And they have one of the best trackpads just ever made. It's got the haptics engine, the single click, double click, all the gestures, everything just works. It registers everything the first time. It's smooth. It doesn't like fatigue your hand or anything. It's just a fantastic touchpad. And the keyboard is much better than the Apple keyboards of like the mid 2010s. The keyboard is responsive and springy and it feels great to type on and I can type on it for hours. And the touch ID is a great feature and it reads my fingerprint and the setup process is pretty seamless and everything just works. I would like to see Face ID going forward on one of these because it doesn't have Face ID right now. And that seems like sort of a gap, but also I do have like the Apple Watch here. And so uh, that actually unlocks my screen also. And again, it goes back to the Apple integration. For the G14, it does have Face Unlock. So I don't know if it's as good as like your iPhone Face ID, but it does have Face Unlock. Uh, a couple of times it failed to unlock me and that was because it said it couldn't see the lighting or whatever and all that but most times it worked, and if not, I could fall back to the Windows pin code. The trackpad is really good. It's probably better than like any laptop made like 10 years ago. Uh, is it MacBook good? No, but it's a really good trackpad. And I did use single click, double click, and gestures, and I swapped between programs, and it all seemed to work and register. Uh, it certainly was not the same feel as the MacBook, but that's kind of hard to quantify. The keyboard was also really good. I would say if the MacBook was like a 100% premium keyboard, the Asus feels like an 85% keyboard. So it certainly looks nice, it feels nice. I do have concerns about longevity because I've seen the white color tend to get stained and discolored over time online, but that didn't happen to mine. I didn't have it long enough to have that happen, but something I worry about. The G14 also ships with some things that are like gamery, which are kind of cringy if you're old like me, right? So it's got this sleep mode where the keyboard blinks at you like this, but it kind of just looks broken or cringy. Like, why would I want anybody to look at that or see that? And then I disabled it in Armory Crate, but I rebooted and it was still there. And you can also get other tools because Armory Crate has a lot of 
uh, bloatware. And so you can get things like G Helper, but even then it's still tricky to manage all that. And it's just sort of like part of the style and the aesthetics, but it might not be your cup of tea. With all that said on the software side, they also take very different approaches. The Apple ecosystem is much more focused on the user and doesn't have a lot of intrusive things. When I logged into the G14, Windows asked me like, hey, do I want Game Pass? Hey, do I uh, wanna use this activity monitor? Hey, do I wanna send all this diagnostic data? All these different props just kind of over and over and over again about sending my data to Microsoft. And then also once you get in, then Asus does the same thing. So Asus then wants all your data. On Windows, the experience is just different. With Apple, they do try and sign you up for the Apple ecosystem, but you're not gonna get a bunch of third parties sort of popping up and trying to get all your data. Uh, whereas on the Windows side, that's much more common. And you even see that with things like the Dell Display Manager. So I made another video on the 27 inch Dell monitor, which you can check out. But when you plug it in, it says, hey, do you wanna install the Dell Display Manager? And that works to mixed results because it's always running in the background and sometimes there's bugs in it and stuff like that. And it was okay. But on the Apple one, you just kind of use the Apple ecosystem, which is good and bad because it's nice to have the choices on Windows, but it's nice to not have 35 vendors all asking you questions when you're just trying to get something done. Both of these laptops are great in different domains. If you're a Windows user who wants to play games and you don't mind fan noise or lower battery life, and you want the ability to swap out laptops and buy different vendors, the Asus G14 is a great choice and it's certainly very affordable. I got this one for like $1,200 off Craigslist and then I upgraded it with a $500 SSD. I was able to edit videos and I'll play games and the performance is good for a laptop. On the other hand, if you're not cost sensitive and you don't play games, the MacBook can't be beat. It has the fastest processor. It has a lot of them. It has integrated circuits for things like video transcoding, you can edit Final Cut Pro on the go, and this thing will just, the battery will last forever. You don't really have to worry about much. And you can do development programming, AIML, and whether you're plugged in or on battery, it's full speed. And so this thing flies no matter where you are, and it is basically a portable desktop. And really even some of the desktop desktops can't beat the performance of the MacBook. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one would you pick?